let's put the best VR headset on the market against a triple 4K 55 inch display for flight simulation. I get a lot of stick online for using screens instead of VR and I'm now in a position to give back a real world answer to which is actually better. So what do we have? What exactly are we comparing? Because that is very important. We have a triple 55 inch 4K Hisense display set up along with a few button boxes and a flight sim builder G1000s that we're putting up against the best flight sim VR headset available to date, which is the Pimax Crystal. Now, if you wanna argue with me about that, then hit the comment section. It's time to put this VR versus screens argument to bed. Now, to help me with this video, Pimax did send out their crystal on a loan basis. And there's a few things I wanna mention about this headset. The resolution is what you could call industry leading at the moment at 2,880 pixels by 2,880 per eye. As far as I can see, this is the ultimate headset for flight simmers. Pixel density is 35 pixels per degree. There's no base stations required. It can use a variety of refresh rates. It's got a full size display port, which is important in terms of picture quality. It's eye tracking for making use of foveated rendering, useful for people with slightly underpowered PCs. The horizontal field of view is around 115 degrees, give or take but the vertical is 105 degrees. Now that's a fair amount and it's something that I'm looking forward to seeing. So like I said, this is gonna be matched up against three 55 Hisense displays capable of running at 120 frames per second. Not that we can actually achieve that. Now, these displays are semi-budget friendly. They've got HDMI 2.1 ports. And for the last two years, this is what I've been using. The reason they stack up well against each other is that you can get both setups for around the same price. Although you do need to take into consideration the extra spent on button boxes and G1000s. To run all of this VR goodness, we're gonna need a beefy PC, something with real grunt to help me get the most out of the Pimax and get it on a level playing field. This is where this absolute beast just behind me from Aftershock PC comes in. This PC should give the Crystal headset the legs it needs to run. So here are the specs of the Aftershock PC. It has an MSI B650 Gaming Plus DDR5 motherboard, an AMD Ryzen 7 7800X3D, an Asus Radeon RX 7900XTX graphics card, a one terabyte SSD, a heap of Aftershock fans and cooling, 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM, and an 850 watt power supply. But when we're talking Aftershock PC, it's not just specs, ones and zeros and megahertz. We need to talk about the art of PC building. I mean, look at it. It almost makes me feel a bit filthy in a good way. This thing is gorgeous. There's a link in the description to the Aftershock PC website. Go check out their stuff. It's not an affiliate link. Okay, let's look at the Pimax a little bit closer. The headset itself is built quite well. It's got this kind of futuristic look to it, which I'm neither here nor there with. I do have the 15 millimeter face foam, which is needed if you use third party prescription lenses. Actually, it's much more comfortable than the one it ships with, and I'd highly recommend that as your first Pimax accessory. And to be honest, I really do think it should ship with the original unit. Talking about lenses, these are Hans VR prescription lenses, which should make a huge difference in terms of comfort, meaning that I just don't need to wear these glasses underneath the VR headset. And I can tell you, it makes a massive difference. There's no getting past the fact that VR is not just plug and play. You really have to enjoy fiddling around with the settings and the setups, especially on this here Pimax Crystal. It feels a little bit like Spaghetti Junction at times, and I suppose in a way, triple screens aren't much different than that respect. Let's have a little wind back and see how it all went down. Maybe 45 minutes trying to get this working. And that's, that's it. Jesus. 
I mean, talk about being inside the plane. This is gobsmacking, absolutely gobsmacking. Now, there's definitely, there probably is gonna to have to be a bit of adjustment with the graphics. The buildings in the distance look super smooth, but moving my head slowly inside the cockpit, there's a little bit of a, a judder. But as I say, I haven't went in, I haven't adjusted anything yet. I can see I'm getting 59 frames, 58 frames a second. I'm, I'm, I'm actually struggling to believe what I'm looking at. I mean, you probably won't be able to tell right now, but the hairs are up on the back of my neck. Parking brake. Lost the mouse already. Where did I put them? Yep, there we go. Let's bring it down here. Release parking brake. <laughs> here we go. The sense of speed. Um. <laughs> Holy sh You have got to be kidding me on. That's incredible. That is absolutely Incredible. Okay, I need to put my flaps up. I mean, I'm struggling to believe. Look at the look at the view out over the wing. It does make me feel a little bit queasy. I'm sure we'll get over that. I tell you what, the the lighting that this is producing inside VR is insane. Absolutely insane. It almost feels like the, the sun is blinding. And if anybody hasn't realized yet, we are flying up around Glasgow. The field of view, uh, I think it was 115 degrees. I'll be honest, I was, I was actually, I had imagined that I'd be able to see more. I mean, it's not a big deal, but oh, this is just incredible. This is absolutely insane. Check out the detail. I've never seen anything, I've never seen anything like this. Just when you look, when you look back over that wing. Honestly, I've, I've got shivers running up my spine right now. I'm just thinking like, all of a sudden there's like a million different planes I wanna try out with this. Right now we're in the Cessna Caravan. Still sitting at 60 frames a second. All right, let's just, I don't, let's just take her in for a landing. I don't know if this is the right runway or not, but we're just gonna try and set her down. So we're at 1500 feet. Uh, find the mouse. The depth perception is absolutely incredible. I feel like I am a thousand feet off the ground right now. I mean, I'm kind of lost for words, I, don't, I just don't know how to explain this. All right, we're lining up in the runway. Doesn't seem to be too much wind around. The headset could do with better audio. Just over the top of the golf course. Too red, too white on the poppies. This is, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. I'm just peering over the top of the glare shield. Oh, it feels so much easier to judge uh, your height. You, you know your elevation off the off the ground. Oh. Oh, this is <laughs> I just. That is amazing. Right, let's take her back up. Just for another few minutes. I'm probably gonna have a go with a few different planes. We definitely need to try IL-2 or DCS next. I don't know if you can see that in the recording, but there is a little bit of judder on the cockpit on the inside, but the, the horizon is like super smooth. I'm even looking at the road, the roads, you know, and the bridges. Everything's just got depth to it. 
absolutely incredible. Now, I don't have many buttons configured here. Um, I don't know where my button box is, it's there. I'm reckoning with a bit of practice, you could probably get a bit of muscle memory with where your buttons and knobs and, and notches are and whatnot. However, for me, I think it would be a bit limited. If I can keep my hands in the throttle and stick and, and use the throttle for everything, potentially, but I feel like in, in here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, I am gonna be reaching for the mouse more often than not. I reckon one of the coolest things about a VR headset like this, especially with one with resolution like this, is that distinct feeling of being inside the aircraft. This is such a cool experience. Now, I'm pretty sure, pretty sure the graphics are set on low. So we will go in here another look. Okay, let's just put everything on medium. See if it makes much of a difference to the FPS. Yeah, big drop. We're now down to 44 frames a second, which still seems smooth. So the, the Aftershock PC is definitely pumping the frames out a lot more than I thought it would have. Although I do need to check the render resolution that we've got set in the headset because I'll be honest, I don't at this point know exactly what that is set to. All right, let's try something a little bit gnarly. Oh gee. Jesus Christ. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna wreck the plane. Oh. <laughs> and immediately when you when you look at the map, like everything's the same as what it was in Flight Simulator, just crystal clear. Um It's evident when actually when looking at this map. It does have a sweet spot in the middle, and that sweet spot, you know, it's not huge, but it can be forgiven for the actual, the clarity in the headset. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Let's see if we can take this guy down. Oh, that was a hit. That was a... Oh, ho, 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 ho. This. This is what VR is for. Man, he's got... Uh, he's got himself in a much better position. He's got the altitude. Let's see if we can pull him down to ground level. Let's go and try and hit some of those ground targets there, actually. Man, this is incredible. When I say... This is what VR's made for. <laughs> Look at the blood on the uh, on the headset. Bullet holes in the wing. Yeah, when I say this is what VR is meant for, and I mean it, this is absolutely insane. What an advantage you've got. Oh, it's coming past. I can you hear the bullets whizzing? on the left. It's going for altitude. Right, let's get some bullets on this guy. Oh, I must have got a hit there, surely. Oh, we're going to get on his tail. Oh, check out the reflections and the scratches on the, uh, on the canopy. Just the same in Microsoft Flight Simulator. When you look over the wing, you feel like you're thousands of feet in the air. There's nothing quite like it. Those disadvantages, although I have nothing really programmed into the button box yet, those disadvantages that I kind of felt I had in Microsoft Flight Simulator seem... They're not gone. Like, they're not gone. But... I think because I'm using the hot ass, everything you might need, or most of the stuff you might need on the hot ass, you know, it's right there. 
which is going to make this a little bit easier. Okay, let's just try some low level. I'm just going to leave that guy for a minute. Oh, this is just something else. <laughs> Man, I've got goosebumps here. Absolutely breathtaking. And yet, and again, I have to mention, I haven't tuned any of this, I haven't mucked around with any of the settings yet. Um, we are running that pretty hefty PC, the Aftershock. With a 7900XTX in it. Oh, he's on my tail. It's coming around. And it's... The, the headset's set to 90 hertz at the moment. And it... I think it's giving me that. It's pretty smooth. Oh, we are head to head. Take some of that. <laughs> I tell you what, there's nothing quite like... Passing close by another plane in a combat situation. I mean, IL-2 is an, a very old game. But this just... VR is just breathing new life into this. On a level that I never imagined. Right, we have... I think we're going to get him on his tail here. Oh, that's too far away. Although I think I got a hit there. I can't wait to get stuck into a campaign with VR on IL-2. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal. So based on what I'm experiencing right now, this is why. This is the reason why you would buy a VR headset for me. The experience of being able to look around and spot your enemies. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing can match that on screens. Yeah, you do have the Toby Eye Tracker, but I think this, I think this coupled with the depth, depth perception, <laughs> it's just, I'm lost for words. Bang! Yes, that was a hit. That was a hit. Down you go. Shit. I actually just belted them with my prop. It's gone. I don't see him anywhere. Oh, yeah. He is. Dead. That's him there. Heading for the ground. Although, so are we. And I never... I never programmed in any gear. There we go. So, I actually can't land this thing. wonder if we can land it. Let's try and land it on its belly. Let's see if we can bleed off a ton of speed here. And we will settle down in that field. We're at 250k's right now. No, we're too fast. We are too fast. Oh! Well, we never exploded. Alright. That is probably the best experience I've ever had in a combat flight simulator. And it was literally, I'm, I'm gobsmacked. Now more recently, I'm back on the 555s. So no VR in sight for the time being, just to give myself that real world comparison. You know, I've spent, I've spent about a week with the VR headset. And clearly you could see that in some respects, I was completely blown away by it. Completely blown away. But this is the first time I've sat back down on the 555 inch. 4K display and Microsoft Flight Simulator. I have to say, immediately, immediately, I don't feel as claustrophobic 
it's nice and open. The peripheral vision is there. You know, I've got like that 180, probably 200 degree view all the way around. The clarity in the screens is better, although the Pimax, it cannot be understated, the Pimax is a pretty sharp headset. And one of the other things I'm glad to have back is my button boxes. I did miss these. I felt that reaching for the mouse for almost everything in VR when it comes to Microsoft Flight Simulator became a little bit, I don't know, it was a little bit annoying. And one of the things I felt in VR that I never realized until I've sat back in here is I don't think I could spend two to three hours on the sim inside VR, but I could quite easily, or I could easily spend two or three hours on this setup just because of the, the space that's created. As far as the things that I'll miss, about VR compared to triple 55s, you know, you got me on the depth perception. The depth perception in VR, <laughs> there's nothing like it. It's insane. You, well, I don't know about you, but I actually felt like I was thousands of feet in the air, like legit. The triple 55s, they're never gonna do that for you. They'll never do that for you. So that that is definitely one thing that I miss. As far as the, the vision goes now i know in vr you can look around you can see above down to the side you can look at your dials but you do not have that oh over speed shit okay i've stressed the airframe restart i clearly can't talk and fly at the same time now i think i was talking about peripheral vision there so yeah when it comes to the peripheral vision i think as mentioned before i've got like 200 degrees on here now you don't get that, even with the Pimax crystal. It still kind of feels like you're looking through a set of binoculars. Now it's probably the best that I've tested, or the best that I've used, but that's just how it is at the moment, unfortunately. And when it comes to peripheral vision in the cockpit, you know, I don't need to look down to see where the, the throttle or the mixture control um, is, you know, it's all on my peripheral. The actual way you use the G1000, for instance, with the physical knobs and dials cannot be replicated in VR at the moment. So that's a big leg up. Navigraph charts. Now, I don't know if you can see in the camera to the right or the left, I've got a separate kind of like tablet here with Navigraph charts. The resolution on that is absolutely insane. I just, I cannot get the same experience in VR with Navigraph charts. Going back to the G1000s, as good as the Pimax display is in terms of sharpness, fidelity, sometimes some of the smaller, like the smaller information on the G1000 display can be just a little bit hard to read, but on this cockpit, on the triple 55s with the Flight Sim Builder G1000s, as long as I've got my glasses on, you know, I can read absolutely everything on the G1000s. One thing that I will miss with VR is being able to move my head to shift the perspective, like if I want to see around the, the column, you know, the airframe, you know, I can, I can peek around both ways with VR. However, I do use a Toby eye tracker mounted onto the bottom of the G1000. And if I ever need that, well, you know, if I'm coming in to land, if I'm trying to spot a runway, I just click head tracking on, and then I can peek around. I can look up over. You know, so I'll get that, I get that little bit of movement that I need, and then I can, click it back off when I don't need it. There's no competition when it comes to immersion in a sense that you're in the plane. The triple 55s don't do that. The VR obviously does. But for me, there's different types of immersion. So there's like the immersion of being inside the plane, but then the immersion of being inside the could you call it inside the game, for instance, or inside the sim, where I've just got access to all these physical knobs and buttons. I've got access to the keyboard. You know, I can bring up different applications. I can, you know, I can I can send emails while I'm in, 
and autopilot you know, from one destination to the next. So after all that, is VR better than triple 55s? This might not be a popular answer. And the answer is no, it's not. But there are certain situations when it absolutely is. When put up against my triple 55s and my setup with Microsoft Flight Simulator, it just is, you know, there's, there's too many negatives for VR, like long-term comfort, narrower field of view, not being able to pick up a cup of coffee, tea, or a beer. That feeling of being enclosed and cut off. A little bit of eye fatigue when running at lower FPS. Look, there's no question that the crystal is amazing and it will blow your mind given the right PC hardware. The first time you look out over the wing at height, the depth perception when landing, the feeling of being inside the plane, the whole experience is it's exceptional. The clarity in the headset is amazing. And the sense of exploration, particularly in Microsoft Flight Simulator, you know, you fly to these places and in some sense, you feel like you've been there. But the negatives that come with VR, like the setup and those things I mentioned previously, just tip the scales in favor of big triple 55s. Now I did throw a big butt in there and it's a big one. If you play DCS, IL-2 or War Thunder and you use a HOTAS, that's a hands-on throttle and stick, then a VR headset is an outright winner. Being able to look up and around you, behind, above, especially with that 105 degree vertical field of view, together with the super clear visuals, even on things like dials and gauges, is insane. If you're looking to get the hairs on the back of your neck up and you want to feel that real buzz when you get in a close combat situation, then the Pimax Crystal will do this for you. I almost my pants the first time in IL-2 when I had a close call through a two-circle dogfight. It, like, it's that good. And it's probably the most fun I've had in combat flight sim in years. So why is VR, in my opinion, better in a combat sim? Well, in a combat simulation, your hands are mostly on the throttle and stick. So there's much less fumbling around. Granted in DCS, there's still a few mouse clicks needed here and there, but on the whole, it just kinda, it just kinda makes sense. Also in terms of the Pimax, it's so sharp and clear that you can spot enemies from a distance. I've never used a headset where that's been possible before. And one thing that people haven't, one thing that I haven't heard anybody talk about is the perception of distance, especially when firing guns and warbirds, or with warbirds, should I say. Once you find your range, it's much easier to stay there and it feels like you have a much more natural gauge of it. I can say this, I might not fly VR for the likes of X-Plane or Microsoft Flight Simulator all that often, but when it comes to combat style flying like DCS, IL-2 or War Thunder, the Pimax, it just makes so much sense. Some of the best fun I've had in a long time. So much so that a VR headset is now on my list of purchases this year. I've put the links in the description to the Pimax Crystal. Now this is an affiliate link. So if this video is helpful in any way and you're purchasing, it's deeply appreciated and it helps me grow the channel. However, there will be a non-affiliated link just below that if you don't want to use it. After the time I've spent getting to know the Pimax Crystal, there are some things you should know before pulling the trigger, good and bad. So the hair on the back of your neck feeling in VR cannot be replicated on screens. You're only gonna get that with VR. The depth perception is incredible. You actually feel like you're in the cockpit. It's mind blowing and super addictive in combat sims. Now having to click inside the cockpit is a little bit of an immersion breaker at times. Pimax Crystal is quite heavy and uncomfortable after say one hour or so. I started to get a little bit of discomfort just across the bridge of my nose. Software and setup can be a little bit clunky, so be prepared. Take some time to really understand how it works and how to get your system tuned for it. There's definitely a learning process, but plenty of good content out there from the likes of Le from the likes of VR Flight Sim Guy and VR Pilot. I'll put links to both of those in the description. Now, these are things you should know about Triple 55s. They are much more of an open experience. You'll have full access to all your button boxes and keyboard. You can easily switch in and out of different pieces of software. 
It's just so easy to get in and out of the rig. The screens are much better for longer sessions in the sim, but then you can't recreate that feeling in your gut like you're elevated off the ground. It can actually be more taxing on your PC. As triple 4K is quite a lot of pixels, <laughs> quite a lot more pixels to push. It takes up a fair amount of room and the screens are not as gut-wrenchingly immersive as VR. Sometimes the heat coming from the screens can make it a little bit warm in there. So final thoughts. It's simple for me. GA and commercial style flying is still better on large triple screens and nobody will persuade me otherwise after this test. VR is amazing, but there are too many downsides to it for that type of flying, especially when you're set up well with button boxes, stream decks, and avionics like these Flight Sim Builder G1000s. Now, if you have a more simple single screen setup, then I reckon the argument could be made for VR here. Combat Flight Sims though, it's a completely different story. Using the Pimax Crystal on a Combat Flight Sim will set your arse alight and it's incredible. It's so much fun. As soon as you sit in a jet or an old warplane, the negatives just seem to disappear and it just becomes you and the plane and it genuinely blew me away. For anyone wondering if VR or screens is the way to go, I'll say this. If you like the idea of a tactile control setup, you sim for long sessions, you like the cockpit building aspect of flight simulation and many people do, then screens is the way to go. You're not really missing out on anything, just apart from that depth perception. If you play combat flight sims, then Pimax Crystal and VR in general is an absolute no-brainer. If you fall into a bit of a gray area between these two situations, and many people do, then your decision is a little bit harder. Both setups have their upsides and downsides, just like we talked about, but one thing's for sure, what an incredible time it is to be a flight summer. The next few years are gonna be very interesting.